The Pantheon of Legends is awaiting your arrival. Back the project campaign for Apex Legends the board game now and get ready to fight for the title of champion. It's, it's Will here. We're coming to you live here doing the commentary yet again. And here we have is the um, Bloodhound model that we're going to be painting for Glenn. Uh, this is his uh, personal model for the board game. We've already done Bangalore and Wraith. After this, we're going to be doing Lifeline. So we're just going to get into that here. So we're going to start here. We're going to paint with um, with uh, gemstone red. This is what we're using on the the jetpack burners and the goggles originally though I do figure out later on that um, the goggle visors look better silver like a lens color than it does a um, red color just because the mask out gets painted later on but here we go I have a boogie board with me also as you can see on the side I use that to write down all the paints I used and then when I took my breaks I just typed them out on the side of the screen there where it says paint list. So if you guys want to see the paints that I use as in painting, uh, take a look there, I'll tell you. Um, AP is Army Painter, VAG is Vallejo, GWS is of course Citadel slash Games Workshop, and then if there's anything special in that brand, or it's like very, you know, everyone knows what like Abaddon Black is, they all have a, it's a, it'll have a thing on there just to let you know what special thing it is. Okay, so here we are, we're using Castellan Green, as you saw there for a quick second. And we're using this to paint the helmet uh, stripe there. And we also used it to paint the um, pouches and back pouch of the, the model. Then we use a different green for the uh, some of the cloth parts of the model. Here we uh, use it as a base color just for some of the straps just to kind of see where they are. We come in later with a different color to actually make the straps and stuff. Though we're using the picture at the top right there as more of a guideline. And to do most of the um, you know, like dirty leather looking stuff, his um, outer pants there, like the outer cloth that covers his pants. We're using a, a, a Zilt, Zilt, Zilt band, it's like Z-E-L-T-H, whatever, uh, brown to paint that stuff. It washes pretty nice. It's from the, uh, it's a, a uh, unique paint to the German start painting set from uh, Warlord Games. It is a really nice brown. Uh, closest thing you get to it is uh, Steel Legion Drab from Games Workshop. And then here we are, we're coming in with the new paint I finally got to test, which I was really excited for, which is um, Tooth and Coats Dungeon Grey. Uh, this is kind of like their sort of, um, you know, thing of Dawnstone. But it's a really nice paint. The Tooth and Coats range is really good. If you want to get into dropper bottles instead of, uh, like get out of Games Workshop pots and get into dripper bottles, I highly recommend check out the Tooth and Coats range. A lot of uh, game stores, especially if they're a, uh, a little bit larger one or a very popular one where a lot of people like to go to, and the person's a hobbyist, they, um, they'll have it. So. I don't only did a touch up with that gray, but now we're getting into the main part, which is going to be the pants, the shoulder pads, all the parts where you see that light khaki-ish, um, not cavalier, uh, canvas look color. We use the khaki from uh, Vallejo's game range, which is a nice paint. It's more thinned down, so it's almost kind of like pretty thin for you. So if you wanted to try Vallejo and you've only had a little bit of experience with thinning, I would highly recommend it. And the little bit I had left over, I just painted some airborne with it. Okay, 
But here we go. Here's the model color. So this stuff is their more advanced line. It's like their intermediate line where um, it's meant for you're painting more display models than gaming models. It does take a little bit more um, skill to work with and it's not one I'd recommend starting with. But the Panzer line is meant for World War II and World War I stuff. So if you're looking for anything that's color correct for historical pieces, Make sure it has the little golden panzer line underneath it. But here we go. We're, uh, we're using more Fame Brown. We're painting the boots and we're going to paint the leathers with it. Uh, yeah, like the boots, um, some pouches and stuff. We're using it for that and some stripes on the helmet. Here we go. This is the the paint I was talking about, the, the gray, the dungeon gray. The dripper bottle design, a little bit weird to me, but it has it had the same sort of issue that I did with Army Painter where um, I shuck it a bit and it kind of splooged out. So I think what I'm going to do is just clean it off. I'm going to let it sit for a bit and I'm going to rinse out the lid and put some foam in there. But I think it would seal perfectly with that. But I did all the straps and things like that with that. Here we have the it's going a little bit fast for me I'm sorry um, but we have my favorite red which is dragon red and we're using that to paint the masks the stripes on the shoulder the helmet and the gloves to make a leather red brown like you can see in the picture there but that dungeon gray um, really nice like I was saying highly recommend checking it out and yeah uh, it's a great paint for beginners who's coming from Citadel who want to try dripper bottles and Duncan has made sure that all the paints are compatible so your models that you use it to paint aren't going to stick too far out. So here we have, this is the model base painted. Uh, like I said, I changed those lenses later on to be more of a silver, but this is it based before we um, wash it and add texture paint to the rocks and stuff. Yeah, so as you can see, those straps and all that parts, the jetpack was painted with that gray. So here we come in, we're gonna be painting the gun with this, uh, some belts and the lenses. And then in the side there, we use some um, Corax white to paint the white stripes. Uh, here's a little sneak peek at what's coming up later on in this series, and we get back into it. Uh, those were the supply boxes for the board game. I, I made. Here we have the Holy Trinity of paints. We also use contrast white and uh, military shade green. Uh, the Reclan flesh shade was used on the reds and the, um, the gold that will be applied to the gun. The uh, pocket theory white was added to the stone and to the bird to give it a bit of a grayish color to let the shot like you know like the light shining off nice clean feathers. The Agrax Earthshade was applied to everything else on the model. And then the Military Shader was added to the parts that I want the green to look different, so mostly the uh, shirt. The over shirt armor panel. Here we go, here's the military shader. Uh, so as I'm saying here, you guys, if you want to try the shades, uh, that last little red thing I showed with the red cap, that's just to show you that if you're looking for army painter washes, which I highly recommend them, even over Citadel, look for the ones with those red caps. Though do use a not super strong, like good brush with them because they are mixed with some uh, lacquer and stuff. Uh, I could do a video later on to explain how to take care of your brushes for that. Here we are, we're coming in with my second favorite red, which is pure red. It doesn't show great on this camera because I don't have my contrast set up properly, but this is a very bright red. Think like clean, brand new Fisher Price, like red from back in like the, the 90s. This thing is bright. And unlike WOG or um, Red Scarlet from Games Workshop, it doesn't. 100% dim down when it dries it like it it um, blends in nicely but it still keeps that brightness so you don't need to do multiple
And here we have the model finally dry brushed and, um, and uh, washed. I just come in with this brush here and I clean up some of these straps and stuff that I kind of washed over or got too grayed down from the dry brush. But that Terminus Stone is my all time favorite dry brush and it works on everything. If you can find a pot somewhere or a color that's very close to it, I think Screaming Skull might be a good alternative. Highly recommend getting it. That thing I do on every model. It is my Frank's Red Hot Sauce of painting. So like I was saying here, and then I did a cool technique with this rifle. Where I do like a reverse dry brush. So like almost like a wet brush. Where you, you kind of treat it like a dry brush. But you come in when the paint is very watered down. But it's dried off. And when you apply it, it streaks and washes kind of like a technical paint. Like an enamel wash or enamel text like effects paint. And it gives it kind of like that worn woody look. Or if you apply it to the other browns, it gave it a leather, like a, a worn leather in the sunlight sort of look. But here we go. After applying that black base ring, we have the model fully completely done here. Um, if you guys want to see this in a better lighting and stuff, I have the pictures on my Twitter, which should be in the links in my banner. I have applied varnish to it so it's dimmer, it's not as glossy and shiny, but here he is. I actually was pretty okay with this model, uh, I like not having to paint a face, I haven't done that in a while. Um, I'm really happy with it is, if anything I'd probably come in and apply some camo to the armor uh, like I did to the, uh, the hood that's on his back there. But all in all, it came out pretty well, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, he was a nice large model. He only took about like two, three hours to print. But yeah, with that guys, we're going to see you in the next video. Hopefully you enjoyed these. But have yourself a good day and we'll see you next time. And make sure to stop by Saturday on my Twitch to watch me paint Lifeline. Bye-bye. The modular system also provides a fascinating and intricate tabletop experience for anyone willing to give it a try. With intense tactics. Click the video. Click it. Click the video, you know you want to.